Good. Uh, I guess yeah. I guess another webinar. Uh, and one of the things mm -hmm. that uh, you know we were discussing uh, was about metaverse and the future of the metaverse yeah. and with all the news that's right. coming out with Facebook. Uh, yeah. So initially, the thought process was let's write an article about it. Um, but because it was just it, it wouldn't make me justified to write an article, I said I thought let's just have a debate because uh, I'm very bullish on the metaverse and it seems that you have lost all your enthusiasm for the metaverse. So no, I didn't um, say that. I, no, no, no. I, I, I'm still enthusiastic for the metaverse, but I just don't think it's it's going to happen anytime soon. But first, let's define the terms, right? Like, let's talk okay, about okay. what do they mean by metaverse. So, like, when I when I say metaverse, I'm talking about like um, kind of like a persistent virtual world, where, like uh, the like people, Ready Player One, uh, kind of like that. Yeah, but yeah. So not necessarily with the VR headset, but to be AR, but it's uh, persistent and it's virtual and it's generally like you know overlaid on the existing world so like if you go around here for example i'm going in a football field but there could be like a virtual building right here or if there's some kind of uh metaverse event uh so that's one possibility or i could just it could be entirely be in vr so yeah so that's what i'm talking about like um when i say metaverse okay what well, that you definitely think that's fair that's fair. I think I think that okay. definitely metaverse has a lot of uh, you know a uh -huh. lot of definitions. Um, mm -hmm. I think that so in terms of what you are saying, I do agree it's not coming anytime soon, right? I think that that is such a far far way ahead. It's like it's like saying that people would be consuming TikTok videos in 1996, right? You know, it okay. it, it 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 will be very difficult. Even though at that time, I remember <clears throat> I just started programming, and one of the <clears throat> one of the uh, sort of promises of the internet was the ability to connect people all across the world real time in a way where, uh, you know, stories are shared and everything. Uh, so it becomes a part of like uh, popular culture, right? Through the internet. And now we are seeing that mm -hmm. through memes and, you know, videos and incidents and like TikTok, everything is now a part of popular culture. Any anything popular culture starts from the internet and then mm -hmm. it becomes sort of popular culture outside. Um, but that mm -hmm. took a long time to happen. Um, and the metaverse, in my opinion, really started off, let's say about 2017, like it really okay. kind of started off. So we're just like five years in, right? Um, and I, I believe that if for five years, we have done a lot, um, it, a lot of money has gone into it. Uh, we yeah. actually have capable devices that have decent uh, renderings and decent amount of uh, sort of immersive interaction. So for the five years, like think of the computers that came out back in, you know, 2000, even early 2000, right? In early 2000, you know, the computers didn't really do much. They did, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe some of the Word, uh, I mean, actually Word, yeah, maybe, you know, Microsoft Word had come out. Uh, gaming was not that great. Internet was very far away from. So you basically had a standalone PC where you could maybe play some games. Uh, Minesweeper was a very famous game back in the 90s. Um, so if you're comparing the devices that exist today and what they can do, on your VR device, I would compare it to like what computers could do in the early 90s. Uh, and I feel like progression uh, is faster. Like from, let's say the Oculus DK1 to the Meta, uh, the Meta Quest that's coming out, that's come out right now. I think it's two, if I'm not wrong, it's Quest 2, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, there's gonna be Quest 3 this year. Later Quest this year. 3. So that is- In, in ten... this year, yeah, but not, right. not so, yet. Right, so, so if Oculus was like a first Oculus DK1 was the first sort of VR headset, and let's say MetaQuest 2 is the is the recent headset. That's like about eight years since release, mm -hmm. uh, and you're looking at a huge amount of progression in that, right? Um, well, yeah. So I, I, uh, let, again, well, I I think that our discussion is let's talk about the metaverse um, that, okay. as opposed to just VR in general. Like, um, like I mean, let's put this into context for the viewers. Like, what what prompted this conversation, right? Let's let's right. for get help people get up to speed like for the people who haven't heard well like you know uh like about the like uh, meta's price reduction for the for the quest pro quest. yeah and then yeah and why and then um like th these news articles talking about um zuckerberg finally moving away from um metaverse investments like maybe you could talk a little bit about that and then just so yeah. tell people you know uh yeah, just, just put it put this into context. Into context. Yeah, people. I mean you're right. Yeah. I think I think that like like I said, the initial impetus for this discussion was 
uh, mm -hmm. sort of the decisions that were made by Facebook, which is sort of the front runner in the development of the metaverse for everybody. Uh -huh. And exactly. uh, you know, exactly. they, they they sort of have slowly started moving away from talking about the metaverse in all their events to like maybe talking about AI and talking about messaging and advertising more. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I, I think that that sort of prompted this discussion, right? Um, right. And and what I would like to know from you is when you talk mm -hmm. about decisions made by a company, let's say Meta, don't uh -huh. you think that a lot of it has to do with its stock price and the fact that at some point Zuckerberg had to come out and like basically acknowledge that, okay, maybe we are not doing all Metaverse because what had, what had happened, and you know, I'm invested in, in, in Facebook, yeah. uh, the, and the Facebook stock, stock dropped a lot more yeah, than, yeah. yeah, terribly, right? And the, reason for, value. right? and the reason for that mm -hmm. is not because their ad business was faltering or anything of that, it's just because when Zuckerberg talked about the future of, of Meta, he always talked about the Metaverse. And yes. he always talked about how much money was going to the Metaverse. And I think mm -hmm. that there is a lot of posturing also with this uh, with this conversation, yeah. which is, hey, you know, yeah. we're not just doing Metaverse. And I think what he's trying to get the investors to understand, because what happens is when your stock price goes down, all these engineers that you have hired, you know, at mm -hmm. these lofty valuations, like, you know, when you're comparing it to Google or Microsoft, suddenly the engineers see their value of their stock go down and basically value of how much their compensation will go down a lot. So mm -hmm. it is as the CEO of the company, it is his duty to basically come out and say, hey, listen, we're not doing, we're not spending a lot of money on Meta. You know, we're only spending a, a small amount, which is 10 to 15% of our cash on the Meta, on the Metaverse. And we're doing mm -hmm. these other things also. I think there's a little bit of fostering also. Um, but um, but for, I, I like think it's, for sure, it's definitely, uh, you could say it's definitely something to assure investors. But like on a practical level, I think uh, they've also realized that like investing in the metaverse is going to take a lot more money, a lot more time. And meanwhile, uh, AI is is kicking off so quickly that it's it, they're in danger of being left behind. So I, it's partly to assure investors, but I think it's also to survive. Like, mm. you know, there's the, yeah. if they if they don't if they don't invest in AI instead or, or, or something like that, then then they're going to be left behind and they're going to become irrelevant. Um, and, and yeah, sure, they're investing in Metaverse and all that, but it's going to take a while for this thing to happen, if ever. If ever. Opinion. Yeah. Not, yeah, ever. I think I, but, but, I don't, about but I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily dead, though. I think that's, that's where the contention is. I think that I don't mm -hmm. think it is dead. I think it is going to slowly evolve and slowly progress. And I think companies like Facebook or Apple, uh, I was listening mm -hmm. to this podcast by Palmer Lucky, uh, mm -hmm. in the Voices of VR podcast. I don't know if you've heard of this podcast, but um, mm -hmm. it is a very, and Palmer Lucky talked about Apple coming up with their AR product uh, very mm -hmm. soon. And obviously he knows these things because you know he's very connected in that sure. whole arena. And I think that the metaverse, AR and VR combined in some form or the other has such great value that it makes sense for these companies to put in a small percentage of their cash reserves into developing this market. Right. No, no, you're absolutely mm, right. I, I, I'm, I would kind of like uh, disagree with like some of the things that you said. That's good. I think like, I mean, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I really, really love. No, we can disagree. Uh, we can, VR. We can disagree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, I don't let's see that when you, as people who love VR, we see the value in it. Like, we, you know, wouldn't you rather go into a VR shop and like pick out stuff virtually and things like that? As opposed to like you know just surfing on the web on your on Amazon or something like that on your phone, and mm. that's the thing for us. It I can see the appeal, but the, the what I what I'm the cynical part of me thinks that it's not it's just people are just not interested. So my my hypothesis is that there's just a percentage of the population that's into things like 3D and VR, okay. and you know uh, 3D has been around for uh, almost as a century, as I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a really, really long time. And you could say it's a more immersive than regular 2D, but it's never really caught on. There's, there's always been just a percentage of the population that's interested in right. it. So, so like, um, wh why not, why don't we have, if we have like regular apps, why not 3D apps? So aren't 3D apps more, more like enticing or doesn't it look better? And um, that never happened. And right. Um, like, uh, like 
there's no no one's looking for a 3D version of the, of the Amazon app. Similarly, uh, I don't people I don't think are really looking for a VR experience of like shopping or anything like that. It, it in sci-fi it sounds cool, and if you try it out, it looks cool, but it doesn't to me in in my mind for most people it doesn't really solve any problem so that's why i don't think it's i don't i think this is the limit this is the upper limit of, mm. of where it's going to get i don't think it's going to expand beyond this in popularity so so um to some of the data that's supporting this like you know there's a steam vr survey right like every every month steam has a hardware survey it it pulls people who are using steam and we're seeing like uh, hey, what kind of graphics card they're using? What kind of processors? One of the things that they're asking about is, do you have a VR headset connected to your PC? And you know, over time, there was a increase in the percentage of users of Steam users that have a VR connected to their PC. But that has plateaued. It, mm. I think, in February, it was like two percent. And I think it 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 peaks usually peaks around the holiday period, like immediately after the holidays. It's like it goes to up to something like three percent, but then it goes down. So it's never gotten like super popular. And uh, that means to me that it's not that 3% of people who have Steam have VR headsets. I think it's way more than that. It's just that how many of them are actively using VR? And mm. I think it's 2% is probably correct. Like I myself, I have, I don't know, maybe a dozen VR headsets. And the last time I've used VR, it's maybe like four or five months ago. I just don't have... I don't, I don't have a use for VR other than games, and I'm too busy to play games. So right. I love VR, but I myself, I'm not really using it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what I mean. Like on a practical level, I that's why I don't think metaverse is going to happen. I mean, if ever. That's my opinion. So, yes, so let, what do you okay. think, Vinit? Well, yeah. I mean, I I think that we both <clears throat> are old. Um, yes. and, and we are not going to be the ones that are going to define the future of technology. Like the, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, I'm 30, I'm 36. Uh, yeah. and you know, I, I I'm can in feel, my late forties. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, you know, I would say that we are for, for technology innovation, we are kind of older, mm -hmm. but we are also sure. sort of, we, we, we tend to be on the cutting edge in terms of our understanding mm -hmm. of what's happening in the technology sure. space. Uh, mm -hmm. but when it comes to our, our habits, we are old, mm -hmm. right? For mm -hmm. example, uh, do you use TikTok regularly? No, no. I mean, I see That's people right. share videos, and I'll yes, from but once not, in a while, but if it's interesting, and I'll look and I'll look at it. But I, I don't use TikTok like every day to just search. Exactly. Like, hey, do you, something, anything, anything do you, cool like right, that. Do you, do you do you converse with your friends on Snapchat? No, no. And there are billions of people that do it, right? That's right. And the reason, right? And I feel like it's the same with VR. I feel like we never thought of short form video content being so impactful till mm -hmm. it came in a format where it could be impactful in the form of yeah. what do you call it, That's TikTok, true. right? Yeah. And yeah. TikTok came up with, and TikTok didn't just get it right. It started off with like four or five versions. It was by dance before, mm -hmm. where it was just dance videos, and then it kind of moved on. And then it mm -hmm. started off as, as Vine, right? You know, mm -hmm. was Vine back in the day. So it took a while mm -hmm. to get to a level because if people would have said, you know what, TikTok is recent, but Vine used to be exactly what TikTok is. But in Vine, it used to be so oh, difficult yeah, very to similar. create the content. Yeah. Right, it was very difficult yeah. to create the content. And what mm -hmm. TikTok did is they just made it super easy to mm -hmm. create, share, and go viral. Right, and so this yeah. brought for the entire world onto TikTok. But if you were to ask somebody five years back, would you be spending two hours or three years of your of your life? Mm -hmm. What problem is TikTok going to solve for you? You'd be like, No, I'm not going to do it. I got YouTube, you know. Okay. And then now YouTube yeah. is doing short, you know, because yeah, that's totally... what people. Right. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You so make a the, great point. Yeah, go ahead. So the point that I'm trying to make is that. In general, we as humans progress because of the tools that are available to us, right? And the tools just get better if more and more money is invested in it over a period of time, right? Okay. Right now, you know, I'm using my AirPods, right? But five years back when Apple came in and said, no more wired earphones, everyone was like, oh, that is stupid. How can you do that? Who's going to use Bluetooth? And now everybody mm -hmm. uses it. Every phone comes with, with a Bluetooth headset. I but, totally but, agree right, about that. Right? Yes. But the, the reason why it happened is because the experience with the AirPods was so premium, better than yes. the existing AirPod, like existing yes. Bluetooth, that everybody Ooh. sort of caught on with it. And obviously Apple with its marketing mm -hmm. prowess, you know, all of that, yeah. they bought it to the market. 
And mm-hmm. that's what I think about VR also is that at this point mm-hmm. of time, it is it's sort of in this, you know, a technology has like this, like this valley, you know, like it, mm-hmm. there's like early adoption and there's like a Trump mm-hmm. valley of sorrow or something like that where mm-hmm. things kind of die off. And then mm-hmm. some company figures out how to like get all the ingredients together mm-hmm. and then it sort of takes off, right? I mean, okay. a, a good example, a good example, simple, is just like uh, Windows, right? Mm-hmm. What Windows did was very simple. It looked at what Mac was doing and just made mm-hmm. it super easy for anybody mm-hmm. to access that software, right? No, I and, yeah. and Windows exploded and then suddenly creativity exploded. Suddenly mm-hmm. people uh, use, you know, businesses got onto Windows and all of that stuff. You know, then it created this whole set of, you know, Dell and, and there's mm-hmm. Lenovo and all these companies started popping off mm-hmm. uh, because what Windows did was it took, took out like proprietary, you know, Unix and Linux and all that stuff and said, all right, all this goes away. You're going to create a great interface. You're going to make it super easy for you to just put a CD, put a code and get it on running. And they also did this amazing thing where they let people pirate their software around the world. Yeah. They, it was yeah. 90% of Windows software, even probably today, mm-hmm. is just pirated, right? Mm-hmm. So it, what we're looking at, in my opinion, is, is we're looking at sort of in the valley we are right now, right? So we're in the valley mm-hmm. where the hardware is almost there, right? The software is almost there, but the mm-hmm. creation tools are not there yet. Like to create, like say, a game in VR or mm-hmm. uh, create an experience in VR and consume it is still mm-hmm. kind of tedious. Um, mm-hmm. So at some point, these tools are going to come together where it's going to be super easy to create. Like, for example, just we both are in the 360 sphere, right? Yeah. We both remember the time where the DSLR boys were all like, 360 cameras are shit. No one's going to mm-hmm. use them. The quality is uh-huh. bad, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. And now uh-huh. everybody uses 360 cameras. I, I agree. So, right. But, so it, no, it's just, it's just, I think it's just a matter of getting the creator tools to a, a, to a level there is accessible by the younger crowd. So I, 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 you said a lot of several things that I, I think are really good points, and I think I, I need to address them. So first of all, uh, that 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 analogy you made to TikTok, like we right. ourselves don't use it, but the next generation they love it. It's, they it's like it, yeah. they depend on it. I have kids who've tried VR. They love VR, like they've tried it and they really enjoyed it, but they are not playing with it. They're on their phones, they're on their iPads, they're on the PS5, but they're not on the VR. It's available to them. I have like tons of VR systems for them, but they don't they, they don't choose that. And frankly, I've, I've tried, like my, my daughter, for example, she's really into art. I said, hey, you know, there's this VR painting app and you can paint in the air. Oh, there's this VR, VR app where you can, there's a VR virtual canvas and you can paint with different virtual paint brushes and it's like simulating painting. It's like, real. I described it and she's like, yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not really interested. I don't want to do that. That's 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 a, a kid who actually enjoyed VR. Like there are things like like vacation simulator. She loves that, or like games like that. She loves that, but she doesn't play with it. Like she'll try it like a few times, and that's it. So uh, your other point was like you know it just needs to become easier to become. And it's as long as it's better, then it's eventually going to catch on. As long as it becomes easier and more accessible, and that's the thing that I'm not. I don't fully agree with because, like I said, I'm analogizing, analogizing to 3D. 3D is better, well, better than 2D. It's more immersive than 2D. There's so many advantages over 2D. You can see depth, all that stuff. But, and and it's easy to create 3D content now. There are 3D cameras, but I, I don't think 3D will ever catch on. So, so the, uh, VR has been around since 2016 or something, and it's had. People enough people have tried it that they enjoy it. They actually like it. See, if you, I've given demos to VR to people, like my coworkers. They say, like, "Oh, wow, this is so amazing and all that." But the question is, do they ever do it again? Again? And, no. I those people no. And even people who like VR, like myself, I, I'm not even using my VR. I I buy VR apps that are cool from time to time, like. Oh, you know, I really want to play this game, but I, I just don't have time to play with it. And the, the point where it could have been useful was a beat metaverse, and that was a good experiment by Zuckerberg to see if VR could be useful for work. And sure, it's used by, I'm sure, architects and some specific industries like industrial designers, if they can make a car in VR. Hey, sure, you know, but day to day, I've tried working in VR, and I don't think I would ever choose that. If I had a choice, I would rather choose like a normal physical environment. It's just so much mm-hmm. easier. So it doesn't, to me, it, it's cooler for sure, but it doesn't solve a problem for most people. That It's not a need that people 
app. That's where I think that's where why it won't ever take off. That's 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 the debate that we have here. So let me let me know what you think. What do you why do you think that? Um, do, do you do you see anything? Uh, is there anything I said that you might we might disagree with? For example, well, I, I disagree with this idea that that we can sort of predict the future, right? Uh, the way I the one thing I've learned about technology is that I'm always wrong. In, okay. In, every time I've thought that okay, this might not work, it mm -hmm. always comes back to work at some point. I I can think of maybe only a few technologies where I thought okay, this won't work, and it didn't work. Okay. Right. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that something else like jumps over it and takes off, right? Uh, sure. Like Blu-ray disc, right? I thought Blu-ray disc was mm -hmm. great. You know, it made a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm. But but then like you know, streaming everything like killed it. streaming yeah. killed it. Everything like it, yeah. like something yeah. something. But the experience of like watching high resolution mm -hmm. uh, content at really good speeds, uh, mm -hmm. not needing you know ten discs to actually contain it. Mm -hmm. That experience still happened, but it just happened in a different way. Uh, okay. And I, I believe I believe that the experience of an immersive uh, format is still going to happen, right? Now, the question is, is it going to happen in a VR headset? Is some technology going to come and leapfrog it completely where it's yeah, not... Let's a, it's say not holograms a, or something. Something like that, you know, uh -huh. where it, 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 something just leapfrog this mm -hmm. this medium that we are thinking is going to be the medium. Um, sure. So that's that's the only thing that I am not convinced that we can determine today that this is going to be not a useful okay. medium for interaction. Because a lot okay. of it comes, a lot of it comes with, you know, it's sort of um, how quickly it spreads, right? Yeah. And what I I've, I've learned is that what spreads quickly has a lot to do with how easy it is to access it. If it's easy okay. to access, then things go very fast, very quickly. Uh, uh -huh. If it's tough to access and tough to uh, create or distribute, it becomes a little bit more tedious. And I think VR yeah, right now is convenient, yeah. right? So the one thing I would agree with you, the, probably the mm -hmm. only thing I agree about is that 3D is far more complicated to create. Oh, and I don't think it's complicated to create. No, uh, I was I, saying that, that compared it's now to, like the 3D cameras are available, 3D software is available, 3D right, glasses compared, are available. I mean, they're not that difficult to wear. I mean, there's like it's convenient enough from to, from I think to become mainstream uh, if right. there was a need, but there's no need for it. There's right. just no I mean, desire for it. That's fair. That's fair. I think. I think I agree. Like with like you on a three D movies, for example. I don't know where you are, but in the U S, it's they usually have theaters that have that release movies both in three D and two D. And me, I love three D. I I enjoy it, but I don't care to to watch a movie in three D or two D. If I just choose based on the schedule, like hey, you know what, this theater is has three D. I, I mean, I th this is it's available at this particular time when we're just done with lunch, we're done with soccer, with blah blah blah. And you know, let's choose that. And if whether it's three D or two D is irrelevant to me. If it happens to be three D, fine. If it's two D, fine. And that's me as a three D enthusiast. So mm. other people, they really don't care at all. I mean, I, like my kids, uh, they don't care if it's three D or two D. So, so that that's one of those things. Like 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 that. I'm saying like, yeah, it's better, quote better, but there's no. People don't have it's, a it's, need not for it. it's, it's not 10x better. It's not 10x better. No, 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 no. It's it's better, but it's just not a need that people have. It's like, like let's say for example, having a movie where you can smell, but it's just not a need that people have. It's like, like let's say for example, having a movie where you can smell the the movie, like you could, like if they you're in a scene where there's a dungeon and it smells like a dungeon or whatever. I don't think people have a need for that. Yeah, so, but, but but just like this one, I don't think people have a need for three D. And I, my my guess that it seems like people don't have a need for VR, even though right. VR is obviously better. Right. So I think that one of the things that this is this is a good this is a good good point, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and this is something that I've learned as an entrepreneur, is that a lot of mm -hmm. people believe that things exist because they are needed, but that is not necessarily true. A lot of mm -hmm. things exist because it entertains. It keeps you busy. It uh, it provides yeah. value just purely for entertainment. 
And if you actually yeah. look around, look around your world and like what you do on an everyday basis, very few mm-hmm. things are needed uh, in terms of practicality. But a lot of it yes. is entertainment. A lot of it is basically I, 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 filling your time with stuff, right? I, I, I agree think, with that. And I feel like in an immersive experience, the, mm-hmm. the entertainment is at a much higher value. Like every time I've done like a roller coaster ride in VR, mm-hmm. I'm always entertained. I always come out being, that was awesome, right? You every mean like I've, a roller coaster where you're, you're riding a roller coaster, but also wearing a VR headset, and then the VR headset image matches what your the, the yeah, roller coaster. Yeah, you know, like, is. That, you yeah, like you know, those, yeah, those I haven't like, tried one of those. Yeah, filters. those. Yeah, and every time I've done it, every time I've done one of those like Beat Saber stuff, I've been mm-hmm. entertained. But you're right. I don't want to do it again because it's bulky, it's sweaty, it's just like it's too much effort to get into that experience as opposed to like taking my phone, opening it up, and playing like Candy Crush. You know, like it's mm-hmm. the, the effort that is required to access that experience is a little too much. Uh, and I believe that if okay. that sort of falls down. I think that yeah. there will be more adoption because people no. just want okay. pe- pe- this idea that we have reached a stage in evolution where mm-hmm. most of our needs are met for most people in the world. You know, sure. like most of our basic needs are met. And which is why, like, yeah. you know, uh, mental issues are so much more important than like other issues because that's all mm-hmm. that's all that is our biggest problem. Like, you know, we don't have to mm-hmm. worry about food or water or sanitation we have to worry about our mental issues because that's kind of what we all deal with on a regular basis and i think Mm -hmm. that this is something that we will see moving forward is that a lot of people a lot of free time because technology has taken away most of our work uh, Mm -hmm. a lot of things are automated and in that time needs to be filled in with something and Mm -hmm. i believe that an immersive entertainment module through vr is what is going to come in and like completely replace it because Mm -hmm. what is tiktok and and instagram and you know youtube they are just immersive ways of consuming content on a 2d thing right okay when that when that becomes that experience goes like 10x 20x and it's easy to access people are just going to spend all their time in there because they don't have to really worry about the other stuff okay so i agree first of all with your premise that uh, a lot of the things that exist are primarily because of their for, for entertainment. Yeah. I agree also that that uh, VR is quote more entertaining, uh, in an, in the sense of like oh it's like more immersive. Would you rather like press a button on your joystick, or fire a gun? You know virtually. I would rather fire a gun virtually. I get all those things, but here's the thing. Uh, I don't know where in your area if you have VR arcades. In our we area, have, yeah, yeah. we do. We have VR arcades. We have normal arcades too, where you know, like people play things and enjoy things. The VR arcades are almost always empty, mm. whereas the VR ar- the normal arcades, they have people in them. So, in terms of convenience, there's nothing inconvenient about the VR arcade. You. I mean, it's ready set up for you. You just go there, pay, and you wear it, and that's it. So, so I don't think. I mean, I I understand that. I agree that friction is definitely important. If there's too much friction, it's not going to happen. But in even in situations where f- the friction is very low, it's not popular enough. Like there are many, like companies, for example, that, where they do a VR experience. Um, they they sell an experience like. You know, you go inside this place and they have like these boxes and physical things that match what you see in VR. I think there's the three or four of those kinds of businesses. I all of them have failed. I think there's one going on like now. They're like a re, re they're restarting or whatever. I I don't think it's gonna succeed either. So so those are convenient and those are have powerful ex- immersive experiences. Uh the that are quote better. But mm. there, it's it's not working, and, and people Fair have enough. tried it, and and they've they they liked it, but just not liked it enough. Okay. Compared to normal, I, I, yeah, I I think I think yeah, I think you know we can kind of wrap this up with just mm-hmm. uh, 
I don't know. I want to be hopeful uh, in some way yeah. or the other, but I, 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 I am 100% in agreement with you that right now it seems like the VR pushed by Metaverse and its sort of ability to go viral is very, very low. And unless something, yeah. unless some company figures out how to like bring everything together in a way that is frictionless, it is still mm-hmm. going to continue to be in the sort of trough of sorrow that most technologies sort of lie until somebody figures it out. Yeah, I, I, you, you, that, no, I hope I agree with you. Let's. I, I want to be hopeful, and I would love for VR to take off. I think. Uh, like if Apple continues with their VR headset, I'm sure they'll be super focused on the user experience to make it as frictionless as possible. And I think that will be a good test uh, of whether removing the friction, making it easy as possible, smooth as possible, is enough to help it take off. Because if 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 they you know if they're if Apple is able to do it in a way that's super smooth. Um, and, and user friendly, then that's going to launch an industry, and everyone's going to start wanting to do the same thing. Just like how I, uh, uh, Apple made smartphones like uh, everything, the mentioned. main yeah. kind of phone. Yeah. So if they yeah. can, it's if anyone can do it, Apple can do Apple it. Can I think so. It. Yeah, I awesome. think so. I hope. Hopefully, it works. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Mike. Thanks for your time. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have more discussions like this and put it up on 360rumors.com. Absolutely. Take care. All right. Good talking to you, Vinay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.